You're gonna be just fine. I just talk, you know, I just talk. Listen to them. Children of the night. Sick transit, Gloria. Thrill me. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Kill the Cast. My name is Jerry, and joining is, as always, the ever-quotable Jay. Who didn't look up a quote this time because I was getting in from doing chores and just forgot to. All right, Love Conquers the Demon, everyone. Uh, <laughs> speaking of uh, loving demons, we also have Kenneth. I guess I'm just a natural-born killer. There you go. Everyone else can do my job for me. Thanks, guys. <laughs> the movie that makes us question nature versus nature. It's actually nature versus nurture, but you'll get my point soon. Uh, in case you people haven't figured it out, we're going to be talking about natural born killers. But before we do that, Jay, how you been? What you been up to? Fucking working my ass off, but I got a nice vacation planned for September and I'm fucking stoked. Nice. Kenneth, how about you? Uh, I'm doing all right. The same, uh, working a lot, uh, but I don't have a nice vacation planned for September. So, but, uh, I'm going to go by your dad's house, Jerry, and check out all his cool shit at some point in time when I get in touch with him. Oh yeah. I'll have to tell you a funny story about him calling me, uh, yesterday morning about okay. a mutual friend of ours. Mine and yours? Yeah. I want to say, is it old Murph? Oh yes. Yeah. Yep. It's a uh, irresponsible Murph. Um, I, you can tell me about it later. <laughs> um, as for me, I've also been working a lot. I got a new job. I love my new job. It's pretty, pretty good. And uh, I've been playing a lot of Magic: The Gathering. So if you're on Arena, send me a message. Let's fight. Let's fucking do this. Let's do it. Did it? Do no. That, uh... Hold up, Kenneth. That hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Okay, where are you going? No, Jay. No, <laughs> Kenneth. Go ahead. I was going to say, I watched that Kevin Bacon movie, uh, You Should Have Left. Yeah, it was all right. It was, it, I mean, I didn't, it was really good to me. Like, not, you know, not like fucking, you know, put it in the fucking, you know, Guinness books or anything. But it, it was decent until the last, like, 30 seconds. And I just did not like the way the last 30 seconds went. I was just like, that just, that just took it all away. That just took me completely out of the movie. Oh, uh, see, I thought the ending was the best part. I found the rest of it a little boring. No, I mean, like... I have like, not seen it. Like, when I talk about the ending, I don't mean, like, you know, the the last, you know, scene scene. I mean, like, after the choice, and then after that, like, where it went into the ending credits. Mm, maybe I'm... We'll have to talk about it later, because I don't... I'll have to hear what you're actually referring to without okay. being vague. But, yeah, I mean... I just didn't like the music or anything like that, but we'll go into it later. And then, uh, let's see, I watched something else, and now I can't remember what the fuck it was, so we can proceed. I gotcha. watched the first episode of Love Class Country, and holy shit, was that good. Is it? So good. I, I started watching um, Castle Rock, and I didn't realize that it was an anthology series, so like the first season and the second season barely have anything to do with each other whatsoever. And I didn't realize that. So when I go into the second season and it starts with completely new characters and I'm really wanting it to pick up after the first season, I was a little pissed. That's fair. That's fair. I have not seen anything of anything of y'all are talking about because this Natural Born Killers being the first movie I've watched since we did Frankenstein. I have not watched a single movie whatsoever, Um, though I probably will watch my Jaws 4K this week. So there's that. Uh, I just haven't been in the, in, the, in the mood to watch movies. Um, I've been just watching YouTube and, and random shit on YouTube. Uh, I don't know what's wrong with me, but this is definitely my least least amount of movies watched in a, a month for this month. But I've also been playing Ghost of Tsushima, which is taking up a good chunk of my free time. Is that so, as good as everybody says it is? Oh God! If oh my God! It's so the combat is so satisfying. Yeah, I really want to play it. But I just hadn't got around to it because, hell, the, the few movies, I'm kind of like you guys, the few movies that I have actually watched when I wasn't just throwing shit on the TV for background noise, I've had to actually go out of my way to be able to watch them. Like, you know, me and Cheyenne decided that we were going to sit down and watch a couple of movies because it's just been, you know, like my son's birthday was this month and, and all the rest of that. And it's just been, it's been fucking crazy, man. It's like finding, you're having to like make time to do shit. Yep. 
Exactly. But we made time to do this podcast just for all of y'all. So we are going to talk about Natural Born Killer from 1994, directed by Oliver Stone, um, originally written by Quentin Tarantino, and then Oliver Stone changed all of that, and then Quentin Tarantino got pissed and threw a hissy fit about everything, and including telling certain actors that if they took a role in this movie that he would never cast them again for any of his other movies. Mm. You didn't hold true to that because then you casted Juliette Lewis like a year later. Yeah, fucker. Um, <laughs> but uh, this is starring, uh, as you know, Juliette Lewis, Woody Harrelson, fucking Tom Sizemore, Rodney Dangerfield, because uh, you have to mention his name. You have to. Oh, yeah, you do. Uh, it's like his only dramatic role ever. It's fantastic. And uh, Tommy Lee Jones, uh, as ma- amazing as always, feeling, feeling that Two-Face vibe from his character in this movie. I'm going to say yep. it. Um, <laughs> and Robbie Downer Jr., who is completely almost unrecognizable in this movie. Yep. Yep. I did. not Yeah, that, that accent threw me off. It did. Um, so I guess I just, when I watched it, I just felt like he was himself with an accent. I don't, to me, he was almost unrecognizable. But then again, when I think of, uh, him playing a journalist character, I think of his role in Zodiac. So I feel that, but to I've me, only it, seen him as Iron Man for the last 12 years. And so this is such a departure from that, that I was like, Oh, look, he, he does do different things. See, I feel like he's one of those people. Like we had, me and Jerry had a conversation, and we may have talked about it on the podcast before. But me and Jerry had a conversation one time about the difference between an actor and a movie star. You know what I'm saying? The movie star is the person that is the same person in every movie that they're in. They just have a different name and a different character. But an actor is a person that portrays and completely acts like something different than themselves in every movie that they're in. And to me, Robert Downey Jr. is a, a movie star. He's Jack Nicholson is a movie star. Jack Nicholson is the same motherfucker in every movie that he's in. I don't agree with Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, actually, either. thinking I of do, his I... of his roles with like this Zodiac, um, uh, uh, Below Zero or Zero Below. What is that movie Less called? Less than Zero. Less than Zero. Like I think he's got range, and I don't see because when when I think of movie star person who acts the same in, like every fucking movie, I think of like Tom Cruise. Yeah, yeah, um, I I, I actually oh, also see, kind no. of think of Keanu Reeves because I feel like Keanu Reeves acts the exact same in every movie. You know, Keanu what? Reeves depends on the director. Um, he's definitely find a niche. Tom Cruise, though, I would say maybe recently, but when he first started out, like The Firm and and Risky Business, and yeah, Rain see, Man, I, he has with that, ability. He's just even like with fucking, that. Mission Impossible guy now. Uh, no, with I that, disagree I with feel you, Jay. Like he was the same dude same in dude. Risky Business and The Firm and all the. I feel like he was the same guy. He was like it was. It was like you take a young Tom Cruise and he had his niche then, and he was the same guy in every movie. Yeah. And then it's when when Mission Impossible came out, it shifted, and then he was the same guy in every movie after that. So it's just like, like an actor takes stages. an actor takes a role. A movie star, the role is written for them. That's I guess true. you could look at it that way. But for me, like for me personally, I feel like Robert Downey Jr. has been I think I, w- I would be willing to agree with you on Zodiac. And that's probably about as far as I could go, because everything else. I mean, when he was in movies back in the day, like the pickup artist and all the rest of that, when he was young, he, he, he pretty much has the same mannerisms in his movies now. You know, like I could see him in the pickup artist and then that guy from that movie growing up and becoming Tony Stark. I haven't seen the pickup artist, so I can't speak on that. Yeah, I haven't actually seen that yeah. one either. I don't. I don't. I don't. Those are those are like back in the Molly Ringwald days when he was uh, doing movies like that. Well, I can promise you, there. I've never seen a Molly Ringwald movie I liked. So, she's another one that's the same fucking person in every movie she's in. Oh, that's probably because she's always well, being. She's only in like four movies. So. She's yeah, and most of those movies are directed by someone who thinks fucking rape jokes are hilarious. That's true. Saying it now, that director is racist. You know who's, and in a, a who's an actor? Actor Gary Oldman. Uh, yeah, there's no argument there. Yeah, completely uh, agree. Uh, fucking, uh, I still maintain the greatest actor ever is. Um, oh god damn it! Why did I just forget his name? Gangs of New York. 
Leonardo DiCaprio. No, not Leonardo Daniel DiCaprio. Daniel Day-Lewis? Daniel Day-Lewis. That is a bad motherfucker right there, dude. That dude right there, holy He's shit. He's a good actor, for sure. He's been in a handful of movies in his career, and he was fucking amazing in every one. Like, Jesus Christ. Uh, okay, let's get back on topic. We're talking natural-born <laughs> killers here. Um, now, the... Uh, I get, let's go, go over this movie real quick and just kind of talk about some of the things that we really liked about it. Um, I actually came up with more questions. Also, Rob Zombie, you're only supposed to steal from Texas Chainsaw Massacre. You weren't supposed to steal Mallory and make her the baby character. I'm <laughs> on to you. I saw it as soon as she was dancing in front of that jukebox and fighting with that dude. I was like, God damn it, Rob Zombie. Honestly, when it really comes down to it, I think the the baby character is a little more intelligent than the Mallory Keller character. But then again, I really despise Juliette Lewis. I really? love Juliette Lewis. I can't stand her. And there's Fantastic just every mo- the only movie that I can even half ass tolerate her in that she's been in is from Dust Till Dawn. What about Cape Fear? I hated Cape her in great. Cape Fear. Cape Fear was oh. great, but damn, De Niro stole the show. Yeah, okay. De Niro. De Niro yelled at her for this movie. He was like, your performance was amazing. And she goes, yeah, I improvised a lot of my lines. And so he scolded her for disrespecting the filmmakers. I mean, when it, <laughs> Rodney Dangerfield also rewrote all his lines. I mean, but when it really comes down to it, I mean, you know, looking back at Cape Fear, if it hadn't have been for De Niro, that movie wouldn't have been nowhere near as good as it was. Well, Nick Nolte's good, too. Not in that. I didn't think he was. I didn't think anybody else in that movie was really that good. It's been other a long time since I've seen that movie. I'm just talking in general. He's wow. usually a good actor. He's well, a hit or miss with me. Audience, uh, should we be doing Cape Fear soon? Shit, you know what we should <laughs> do? It sounds like we should be doing some kind of discussion about actors and movie stars is what it sounds like. <laughs> uh, true. Um, so I got a question for you, for you guys. Did the mom deserve to be murdered? Fuck yeah. yeah. Yep. But she was a victim of abuse also. But she was still letting it happen. Yep. Yeah, but she's a still a victim of abuse. She could have Stockholm Syndrome. She's mentally warped at this point. So? Uh, yeah, but, yeah, no, nah, she got to go. She yep. clearly says to the husband, you know, I don't care what you do with me, but I'm not allowing you to be dead. No more meat. Like, that's the line that made me go, huh. Did the mother deserve this? Yep. Also, what happened to Kevin? I'd like to know that. Where's I'm Kevin? I'm curious about that as well. He went on to start Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> Goddamn people trying to ship books. <laughs> I mean, that's it. That's where he went on to do. He um, became one of the richest people in the world. Yeah. My dad told me a story once that he uh, got offered to buy stocks in Amazon and didn't because he was like, who the fuck's going to keep buying books? Because when they started, they were just shipping Oops. books. Wow. Yeah, fun times. Um, <laughs> I really liked the the opening scene. Uh, and Jay, you were right. It does fucking highly feel Tarantino. Uh, but apparently, this opening scene is all Tarantino has ever seen of the movie. <laughs> so there's uh, that. I can understand. He was he, he wrote a script. He, then no one would let him make it. He sold it, and then they changed it. I can just imagine. I'd be upset too. Yeah, yeah. So didn't this come out after he had done Pulp Fiction? Uh, I don't know. Let's, I'll, I'll hop on IMDb really quick. Yeah, you find that out, and I'm going to talk about the knife being thrown through the window, because that's fucking awesome. Yeah. I really like that. I'm just going to put it Pulp out there. Pulp Fiction was 94. So they were the same year. Interesting. Very Interesting. But again, he had already done Reservoir Dogs, so he had already submitted yeah. himself as a good filmmaker because he was doing Pulp Fiction at the time. So I wonder what they disliked. What Terrence? Uh, his script? Yeah. What about his script um, that they changed so much? According to Oliver Stone, his script focused more on um, Robert Downey Jr.'s character and uh, and. and Taron and Stone wanted to focus more on um, Mallory and Mickey and change the focus more into like how, 
you know, the whole message of the fucking movie that they beat you over the head with the entire fucking movie of us glorifying, uh, you know, serial killers and shit. Um, but I, I don't know. Apparently, you can actually read his original script, so I'd like to read it to see what it is. Also, let's remake Natural Born Killers and let Tarantino do his original script. Right. Even though he wasn't going to, he, he was not ever going to be the director of this movie. His buddy was supposed to be the director of this movie, but instead his Robert buddy just... Robert Rodriguez? No. No. Someone he worked with at a video store. Oh, okay. Uh, he's got a producing credit on Natural Born Killers, so though. That was the trade-off. He got a free producer's credit. Can so you dope. imagine working at a video store with pre-famous Quentin Tarantino and the discussions about movies he must have had? That, that would have been, been annoying as job. shit. What? No, I would have had... Oh, my phone. God. Uh, Yeah, I really liked that one movie... Yeah, but if you saw that one Spaghetti Western, you probably never heard of it. It came out in Italy in 1964. Technically, it was 1965, but really 1964. And you see, they didn't have enough shots of feed in it. That was a big problem with the movie. But everything else in the movie was great. The script, uh, the music, the shots. They did this great thing. And I stole it for this movie I'm going to make. I'm sorry. When it really comes down to it, I completely agree with Jerry. <laughs> Because don't get me wrong, I love Tarantino's movies, but my God, have you ever watched fucking a full interview with a man? Yeah, I love watching them. Jesus Christ. They, I mean, it's like, don't get me wrong, I love people having knowledge of movies, but this man has knowledge of movies that I don't I don't even know exist. I don't think most people do. This He's got knowledge of movies that are in alternative timelines. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like, it's I mean, ridiculous. Like, it's just like, you know, I, I just, there, there's just no way that you'd be able to keep up. At a certain point, someone knows too much shit and you can't have a conversation with them. Right. I mean, you might as well just sit down and fucking just sit back and just let them talk. And he, I, I honestly think that Tarantino likes hearing the sound of his own voice. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I just picture, I because he's really good at writing dialogue, so I would imagine the conversations that, you know, would be like the dialogue in his movies. Uh, no, I really doubt he talks the way he writes. Hey, he I'm definitely doesn't say the N word that much in real life. Yeah, I'm never disputing the fact that Tarantino makes great movies because I don't think there's any of them that he made that I really don't like. And there's obviously ones that I like more than others, but I like all of his movies. I'd have to say probably right now, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is my favorite out of all of his movies. It was so good. Yeah, I mean that that one to me is my favorite, uh, with Inglorious Bastards being a close second. But. Uh, you know, it, it, I, I just couldn't do it, man. I mean, it, like I said, I love intelligent conversation when it comes to movies and other things, but it would just be too fucking much, man. Yeah, I would like to go to a lecture he did, but I don't want to have a conversation with him. That's right. fair. That's fair. Um, I also want to uh, have Juliet Lewis every night tell me we, we live in the ocean now because... I really like that line. I just wanted y'all to know that. Um, yeah, you have fun with that. So I brought up this... I wrote this in my notes. Uh, the title is Natural Born Killers, but technically, Mallory and Mickey are technically both products of nurture and not nature. That's true. Um, there's an argument that is made towards the end of the movie uh, where Mickey is talking about, you know, oh, well, my dad was a killer. He was born with it, so I'm a natural-born killer, too. But I'm just like, here's my problem with that. Woody Harrelson, the real-life person, his dad is a hitman. Is he? In real life. He's, like, the first person in the 21st century to kill a federal judge. Oh, like, shit. Good for him. So... His dad might be a natural born killer, but he is not a natural born killer. But I just think it's funny um, that they're technically both products of nurture and not nature. And so he's, you know, we're, this is natural to us. And he does his whole fucking bullshit feel like he's fucking Charles Manson. Um, but he probably got raped a lot less in jail than Charles Manson did. Oh, yeah. Because he killed anybody that came near him. Yeah. Charles Manson did not do that. Charles Manson is a pussy, guys. Let's. Oh let's, yeah, he's a fucking coward. Let's let everyone know Charles Manson is not even in the top twenty of serial killers because he's not a fucking serial killer. True. Tired of the Charles Manson praise. 
He's a bullshit artist. Give him credit for that. He's very talented at that. Um, so I just think that's very interesting, especially with the whole uh, message of this movie of us glorifying real life serial killing while blaming the movies and video games on it's what's making everyone so dangerous but then we just we glorify serial killers constantly in the news you see i don't think it's like now you know back when this movie came out i can uh, i can see that but i don't i don't think the glorification is nowhere near what it was then i think we glorify other things now because you know you've got all the politics and shit that are going on now. And, and, you know, you've got things that are what people at one point in time would have considered conspiracy theories, which are now having some form of truth, uh, things like that. I think it, uh, that's kind of what I meant in my message earlier, where I feel like this movie's dated because don't get me wrong. It had a very, what they were going for is a very powerful message when the time the movie came out and it actually turned out to be a big hit for, not because of its satirical thing, but just because, you know, people thought the movie was great. But, you know, now I don't think it plays nowhere near as well as it did then. And when I was watching the movie last night and, and I'm sitting there, I'm like, the whole time I'm watching the movie, I'm like, I was thinking about myself in the time frame the first time that I watched it. And I was fairly young the first time I watched it because there was a whole lot of stuff going on at the time that the movie came out where you were hearing about young people killing their parents because they watched this movie and blah, blah, blah. You know, and uh, if I'm not mistaken, there was a couple of times where that was true or or, or I don't know. It's so an urban legend. I don't just know. to interject, there was, a, 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 and I, I read about this, a girl and a boy dropped acid and went and saw natural born killers that night they ended up like killing someone in a convenience store and uh this lady sued oliver stone and, and uh warner brothers um i think it was warner brothers made this movie with the help of author john grisham what the fuck and sued him and like it didn't get like fucking it ended in 2002 uh, where it was finally thrown out of court. But basically said the filmmakers should be held responsible for making things that they know are going to influence people into committing violent acts. Yeah, that's bullshit. But, I mean, again, there we go. You know, I knew there was there had to have been at least one count of it. Like, there was an, I, I don't, and to this day, I don't know whether this was an urban legend or not, but there was a story about, because I remember I was at a convenience store <laughs> uh, close to where my mom lives. It wasn't the one at Powers Crossroads, but it was the one further up. And I was there, and there was, the person behind the counter was talking about how some kid nearby, and when I say kid, he's, 13, 14, you know, and I think I was like 16 or 17 at the time, um, had, had went and killed his parents and, and made some comment about it was because he wanted to be like Mickey and Mallory or some shit like that. And to this day, I don't know whether it's an urban legend or not. I really, I never really looked into it, you know, but going back to what I was saying at the time period that this came out, you know what I'm saying? I remember watching it and being, somewhat i guess taken back by it i was like whoa fuck you know this this is a completely different thing because the movie itself even though it was trying to be a satire of what was going on and really push this message of you know what you were talking about about people glorifying serial killers in in a sense the movie did just that you know because i don't for younger for the younger people at the time period that this came out it, that's exactly what it was doing. It it was making, you know, it 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 was making Mickey and Mallory like fucking superheroes in the movie. You know, you you felt for them. You felt for their love. You felt for what was going on for them and stuff like that. And 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 it's always been interesting to me. And then I watch it now at the age that I'm at, and I'm looking at it, and I've seen so many different things and so much more heinous shit that's happened in real life that I was actually kind of bored. When I was watching it, I think the only thing that really kept me amused was catching little things here and there that I didn't notice when I was younger when I was watching it and the psychedelic look of it. 
But other than that, I mean, the animation is really cool when they do the animation of Mickey and Mallory and like and fucking you know, tripping. Yeah, and like Mallory's fucking biting the head off of this little cat thing and whatever else, and you got this big old beefy fucking damn Mickey running through there, you know, all the animation and whatnot. That was pretty cool. Oh, but... yeah, the 90s graphic novel. This yeah. movie is more 90s graphic novel than any comic movie that's ever been fucking made. Right. I mean, it almost, it, like the animation kind of reminded me of Cool World. Do you remember that movie? Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, but, <clears throat> so I was actually kind of bored, and I was like, huh. How do I feel about this movie now? Well, this is definitely not one of those movies that's in my top anymore. So I guess, uh, I don't know. I guess I'm just turning into that boring old man. Yeah. I will also, I want to say something uh, from what you were talking about earlier about um, how this movie doesn't hold up as well anymore with its message. And I agree, but I think the reason it doesn't hold up anymore is just because of how fast technology is now compared to then now we can have you know seven serial killers and we'll know we'll we'll know about it and be bored with it in five minutes um that's just the the way of the world now so uh, this doesn't hold up as well now because it's like oh well people would get so bored with so quickly now and also, it, you know, like nowadays, I don't think I don't I don't personally think that a a couple like Mickey and Mallory would really make it that far. Oh God, no, no. I mean, because there's so much like like you said, we've got so much technology now that they they'd be caught so fucking fast because of how you know boisterous they are and how much that they want to you know be in the limelight. Yeah, they'd be they'd be caught so fucking quick. Oh yeah, their first Facebook live stream popping someone in the face. They're they're probably caught real quick. Yeah. I mean, you, you can't be like you can't be just an open spree killer now and not get caught in a hurry. That's 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 the reason why like nowadays with with uh, crime scene investigation and things like that, most of your serial killers that you have now that exist damn have to be damn near extremely meticulous about what they're doing to not get caught. Yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, th this movie is, is a lot of movies are either substance or style. This movie does both. It, it, it has its own style and substance substance. It, 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 it works. It does work as a film. Um, while it's not as potent now. And in fact, some of it is, is kind of cringy. Um, this movie didn't age well, not, not just with its message, but with its style. Right. Um, yeah, I, uh, I was, I was really kind of taken out of everything with the weird, the weird cuts, the back and forth between color and black and white. Like, I don't know. It took me out of it so much. The, the last, the, the last, the third act is probably my favorite in the whole thing. Uh, but all the shit in Most the prison. Most of the editing choices just really took me out of the film a, a lot. I agree with Jay. That was probably going to be the next thing I would say is all the shit in the prison is probably my favorite part of the movie now. Oh yeah, easily. Um, and it's also this is a movie where I'm like I would like to see movies based on other characters in here. I would like to see a movie based on Tommy Lee Jones' character or Robert Downey Jr.'s character or the detective, like. Is the cop killing a prostitute while hunting a serial killer? Is that officially a trope now? Mm -hmm. Like, was it a trope then? I don't think so. Wait, or was it, it still trope? fresh? What are the movies is happening? Uh, maybe it's not a movies, but that's a pretty popular like like thing for the detective, where the t detective starts turning dark. Yeah. While hunting like darker people. Oh, okay, that yeah, I agree with that. But like at the time period, I mean, there was definitely there there was definitely subject matter that um, took place with with cops going dark or cops yeah. already being dark or you know whatever. Which Hellraiser so movie is that? Inferno. Inferno. Yeah, that's what I kept thinking of. But there was definitely stuff like that. But there wasn't nothing like to that level, you know, where <clears throat> where you can definitely tell that this cop, you know, has got his. You know, he would be he would be a I would be willing to bet that if he got caught for everything or everything that was going on psychologically with him, that he would definitely be a sex offender. You know what I'm saying? 
Mm -hmm. uh, that would be one like a rapist. He would definitely be that, you know, uh, the the easily manipulated because the whole the whole instance like, like I guess I, I would feel like that that Scagnetti would be trying to justify what he was doing in his head by saying, this is me getting closer to Mickey and Mallory. But at the same time, he would have to be psychologically off to begin with to be able to commit acts like that and try to justify it that way. Yeah. Which so, let's point out also a product of actually, he might be a product of nature instead of nurture because he watched his mom get her fucking chest blown out by a sniper. Uh, that uh, He talks about in the movie how he uh, he was on a campus and a guy got in a tower and started shooting people, which is based off a uh, real-life thing. It was... Um, uh, I got it. Charles Whitman. One of the... Like, he was one of the first, like, mass murderers in America. Uh, and that Charles happened Whitman? in Texas. Was that at a college or something? Yes. Um... Uh, I don't, I, it was in the 60s, like mid 60s, and it was at a college. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Um, so, would you call that nature or nurture? Because to me, that goes along more with, um, it almost kind of works very well with uh, Mickey's whole thing about how in nature, everyone murders. I guess that we kind. Of, I guess that we kind of go in that direction because it's like you know, you Mickey and Mallory are products of their upbringing, you know, because obviously, damn, Mickey's dad was abusive and then fucking blew his brains out, and then we we know exactly how Mallory's fucking family life was. So you know, you've kind of got that. They were kind of created that direction where they were, were that, but damn, I still, when it comes to Skagnetti, I believe that I believe that he was kind of born with that in him and things that he saw as he cre as he went along kind of mm -hmm. fleshed it out. Yeah. I'm oh you know? I'm 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 watching this deleted scene from the movie that tells what happened to Kevin. Uh Kevin was actually getting up to kill everyone in his house for Mr. Boogie for a sinister prequel. And uh what? since since uh yeah th this is what happened since Mallory beat him to it. Uh, he he actually never got to go with Mister Boogie, um, and never got to make any v VHF saves or anything like that. So he actually uh, went and was in a Kiss cover band for a while, but was eventually fired for sucking dick for crack in in the bathroom at one of the gigs and missing the opening song. Speaking of unbelievable things, uh, what do you? What is everyone's most unbelievable thing in this movie? Like Kenneth, what in this movie did you see and you go, "That's just no." Well, I'm sure Kenneth is going to have a whole lot of answers for that one. Well, just give me one, one that stuck out to you. Hmm. I mean, something that's not like obviously supposed to be that way. I what I mean obviously it's a movie but still like I mean you know like I'm talking about the bullet stopping in midair right before it busts somebody's head open or or Well no that's uh, that's no I mean like something that like not something that's a camera trick for for like or or part of the like acid trip of Mallory driving across the fucking road and the house is I mean, getting the, the fire projected on it you, the knife shot that you love you know the shot looks really cool but the fucking physics of it suck because okay there's yeah no way that. that would happen okay that's what i mean jay do you have something in the movie that you saw and you were just like no nah, we're not gonna fucking work well uh the fact that they tried to go to a regular uh pharmacy for anti-venom never got it and were fine uh, when in reality they probably would have lost whatever limb got bit by the rattlesnake. <laughs> That's a good point. Uh, mine was uh, Mickey wearing an earring in jail. <laughs> you know, I thought That's about fair. that when I saw it. I actually did think about that when I saw it. I was like, huh. <laughs> it really bothers me, be especially because Oliver Stone himself says the scene he doesn't like in the movie is M Mickey telling the joke to all the cops to get them off their guard. He says it's unbelievable. And I'm like, he's wearing a fucking earring in jail. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, it's I'm, not that unbelievable, though. I mean, he's a real charismatic person. Have you ever been person. to jail? No, not the earring, the joke thing. Oh, yeah, the joke thing. Yeah, I'm fine with the joke thing. No, I, they made I me, would not survive. Okay, dude, Trust if me. I couldn't have got my tongue ring out when I got arrested, they were going to cut it out of my skull. Oh, no, no, I know. I'm talking about the joke, not the earring. But I'm, ju- I'm just saying. So I'm completely with Jerry on that. You can't even fucking have shoelaces. That's another yeah. thing that really gets me about when you watch movies of people in prison. They've all got, like, fucking designer white tennis shoes on, and I'm like... Only the really good ones are the one like um, that movie that had uh, oh shit it came out recently and it had dude from Game of Thrones in it. There's uh, so many from Game of Thrones. You're gonna a lot have of dudes. A lot uh, of dudes. Uh, Jamie Lannister. Okay. I don't know what movie you're talking about, but I know oh, Jamie any, Lannister. Any, any, uh, shot caller. Yeah, that one. That movie was okay. fantastic. Everyone should watch that movie. That one was totally legit. That's like, a really you see nice these guys movie. that are in there? They're in fucking jump shoot, uh, jumpsuits and slip-on shoes. Yep. You know what I'm saying? There's no shoelaces. You ain't got no fucking belt. You ain't got none of that shit. That movie was great. Gotcha. You, you should watch that, Jerry. It was good. Word. I'm not watching movies currently, but when I do, maybe I will. Like um, it's <laughs> not an action movie. It's a, a nice slow burn criminal good drama. drama. Oh, well, I do like those. It's Big fan one. of criminal courtroom drama really style good, stuff. Uh, character development too. So uh, I wanted to bring this up also. Uh, I read this on IMDb and I thought this was kind of crazy. Uh, in the mess hall in the prison, a bald white man is staring at a black man, prompting the black man to try to attack him before being intercepted by Warden McCluskey, a.k.a. Tommy Lee fucking Jones. So when they were filming this... Uh, The first half of filming this, uh, the non-riot stuff, they used a lot of actual prisoners who were actual murderers as the extras. When it came to the riot, they did have to switch them out. But so, oh, here we go. But that bald white dude, he was in there because he murdered his wife and child by beating them to death with a lead pipe. And why were they letting this guy film fight scenes? Uh, (laughs) Oh. Oliver Stone gave him a feature role because he said the man's stoicism terrified him. Jesus Christ. Uh, wow. Is Stoliver, uh, Stoliver Stone, uh, Oliver Stone an asshole? Let me tell you this story. Oliver Stone met with singer Tori Amos and openly offered her the part of Mallory. Early, early in her career, she was trying to do acting as well as singing. So she wasn't interested until he explained he also wanted to have her song Me and a Gun play during each scene where Mallory kills someone. Maybe not a big deal until you find out that that song Me and a Gun is about her real life rape. Damn. She slapped the shit out of him uh, and left. So... Is Oliver Stone an asshole? Did yes. Oliver Stone realize that that's what that song was about? That's a good question. I've never heard the song or looked up the lyrics, so I'd have to look up the lyrics and then go, Oliver Stone, are you smart enough to understand this is about her real-life rape? Dude, when it really comes down to it, man, there's a lot of songs out there, you know, you you should know more than any of the three of us, that... You know, if, if just listening to the lyrics right off, you're not going to get exactly what somebody's talking about. That's true. He could have heard it and thought it was, you know, oh, I like the feeling. This would this would fit good in the movie. Right. Uh, so, yeah. okay, that's fair. Um, t- I still think Oliver Stone's probably an asshole, but... <laughs> yeah, probably. Uh, so this was Quentin Tarantino's second feature-length screenplay. His first uh, was True Romance. The script was... Re- still haven't seen True Romance? Oh, True Romance yeah. is fantastic. That's yeah, um, really good. The script was rewritten by director Oliver Stone um, and producer Richard Rutrowski? I can't say your name. And screenwriter David Villas uh, prior to endearing production. Uh, the f- and so it does not look much like Tarantino's original script. So... Those are just a couple of things I pulled off IMDb that I thought were interesting things. There's a lot of other things like uh, the scene in the pharmacy. Apparently, while filming that, uh, one, two of the people with the cameras, one of them broke their finger and the other one got his eye fucking cut open. 
<laughs> so, and then, and I was just like, well, goddamn. But as for that movie, it does not hold up well, but it's still very entertaining to watch. Yeah, it was all right. <laughs> I, I mean, I'll be mean, again. I was kind of bored when I was watching it. I, I actually, you know, I wasn't lying. I had to force myself to get through it. I just think, because I knew we were going to do the show. I mean, I think I would have liked it better had it been cut together a little differently. Like maybe instead of flashbacks, just like literally doing it in chronological order and a little less of the crazy, the crazy edits probably would have had me entertained. I I was actually re I really liked all the crazy edits. I don't think it helps the film, but (laughs) I enjoy the random cuts to like old, like, 1950s black and white sitcom stuff to commercials, yeah, which Coca-Cola approved the commercial for this and didn't know what the movie was about, so they were pissed later on. That's Dumbasses. fucking hilarious. I was uh, that's another thing that I was thinking about when I was watching it. I was just like, I didn't think Coke put their fucking shit in movies like this. Uh well, you know, it was Oliver Stone and they were like, fuck, it's Oliver Stone. They did you know, it. They fucked it's like, up. Uh, it's like watching movies with uh, with Apple products and bad guys can't have Apple products in movies. Yeah, super yep. shit like that. Which, to me, I think that something that is used in everyday life, whether it be a Coca-Cola or an iPhone, uh, should be allowed to be used in movies and music videos and shit like that without getting consent or having to pay for it. Because it's an everyday thing. Like, if I'm filming in a house and there's a Vizio TV, well, of course there's a fucking Vizio TV. I don't, I shouldn't have to go get that approved. I agree with you. Like, um, like that was the cool thing that I don't know if you noticed, but when, uh, when Scagnetti was given, uh, Mallory a cigarette, it was an actual Marlboro pack. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. I was looking for it because there's like, there's some company that's always the same in these movies, and I can't remember. I want to say it's like Morton Cigarettes and Morels or something like that. Yeah, and, unless it's yeah. by Kevin Smith, then it's Nails. Right, but all the other movies, I think that's what it's called. It's called like Morels or something, and the pack looks just like a fucking Marlboro Red pack. It just doesn't say Marlboro. But in this, if you watch it, it it's an actual Marlboro Red pack. And when she pulls it out and sticks it in her mouth, and that's cl- and there's that close up of him lighting it for her, you can see the Marlboro thing going across the side of the cigarette. Wow, that's crazy! Is it weird that we're that like that's something that's fascinating to us? <laughs> Product placement in a movie, and well, I mean, like... it's, it's it's insane, man. I mean, you're right. There's there's so many different you know, regulations and shit like that to things that are just everyday shit. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's just like, like, like if you see somebody in a damn, you know, like, let's say for instance, you're watching a basketball movie and the people that are in the basketball movie are wearing Nike, Adidas and Jordans. They have to pay to put Nike, Adidas and Jordans in the movie unless they think it's going to be like an Oscar worthy fucking basketball movie. And then the company will insist in it. But if it's going to be like a, you know, if it's going to be like an independent film that's got something to do with basketball and the the characters are wearing those particular lines of clothing, then they've got to pay to put it in there. That's fucking stupid. Yeah, I agree. Like, I just because like, you know, good God do you have know. to like when it comes to clothing? Yeah. Because most clothing would not have a brand on the outer appearance. I guess you don't have to worry about it too much but if you're wearing something that has like a band on it i guess you'd have to get that approved also right because like if you think about it when you watch all the special features and the making of and stuff like that and you've got the wardrobe people they pay thousands of dollars to custom make these fucking um to custom make these pieces of wardrobe for each one of these actors so like uh one that i can remember specifically is when i was watching the behind the scenes on the on the devil's rejects like that 31 days in hell making of when you're watching that three-hour documentary, there's a scene where where Rob Zombie is with his uh, his wardrobe lady, and they're getting together what Otis is gonna wear. And one of the fucking pairs of pants that Otis is wearing, it costs like I don't know five thousand dollars to make that one pair of pants. 
Yeah, it's ridiculous. Like, you shouldn't have to fucking go through with that at all. Like, it just doesn't make any fucking sense to me. Are we really, like, that so, like, so trigger happy to sue fucking company between company? I, I guess, man. I mean, and they're not. The I, I mean, I guess they're trying to protect. Oh, fuck me. I just burp really bad. Protect their image. Cause but I it's stupid. Like one time and thought to myself, I'm like, before I started actually looking into it, I thought to myself, OK, I'm like, why is this movie going to cost a hundred million dollars to make? All right, because. If you look at how much you're going to pay the actors, which that's a chunk, you know what I'm saying, depending on what the movie is. So, like, let's say we'll, th we'll, we'll throw a Marvel movie out there. You know, a Marvel movie costs $350 million to make. Well, you got your main actors, like fucking people like Robert Downey Jr., who are making anywhere from 20 to $50 million per movie. All right, so you got that. All right, and then you've got, or or what was it that, uh, what, did, what did fucking Harrison Ford make off of goddamn um, uh, the, Star Wars? Yeah, off of Star Wars, that one that he died in. What, what did he make off of that? Like twenty-two million dollars. I Probably. think it was something like. I think it was something like that. But it was still okay. You look at that. You look at how much it cost to pay the ca the the cast and crew. Then it cost the the set design. Then you look at the music, which is the score of how much you're paying. You know, like like for these high dollar songs and shit that go into these movies. You know, like when you got you know like. Uh, like uh, Aerosmith or fucking you know uh, any of the newer any of the newer shit or something like that. The insane amount of money they're they're paying to basically rent this song to put in this movie, you know the insane amount of money they pay for that. And then you get down to things like wardrobe and all the rest of that, where you where you're paying like okay, each one of these actors has got to have what five different versions minimum of each one of these outfits, you know, so, so, so that way they can keep up continuity. And each one of those things costs $5,000 where you look at that. That's $25,000 on one actor for one outfit. Yeah. It's crazy. Also speaking of music, uh, Oliver Stone and Trent Reznor, who did the soundtrack for this, they wanted to get Snoop Dogg to do a song for the soundtrack, but uh, Warner brothers wouldn't let him cause Snoop Dogg was on trial for murder at the time. That's funny. Uh, yeah, but uh, you're right. I was watching uh, some really high class entertainment the other day. I was watching uh, Limp Biscuits Rollin' music video, <laughs> and uh, they blurred out his whatever it said on his shirt, but like his his Yankee cap that he his red Yankee cap that has like you always see the Yankee symbol, and you always see the MLB signal symbol. That wasn't blurred out at all, but whatever was on his shirt was. And I'm just like, when this music video came out. Was there really a company who was like, no, Fred Durst, you cannot wear our stuff in your music video, which will make millions of people buy our merchandise? I mean, and it could have been, man. I mean, you got companies like, uh, like for instance, Levi. Okay, Levi is a company that will that does not support Second Amendment rights, so they will not allow any of their clothing or anything else like that in any kind of ad, any kind of magazine, anything else like that that has anything to do with guns or the NRA. Nothing. No matter wow. what. Wow, I mean, I would let Keanu Reeves wear Levi's in the new John Wick movie, but I would not let someone in the NRA wear Levi jeans. That's well, I mean, wouldn't it be hot under under all their white robes? No, I'm just kidding. Sorry, <laughs> I had to make the joke. Uh <laughs> But it's just it's just the point of fact, man, where there's things like that. And just for just for you know, just for reference, everything that Keanu wore in all three of the John John Wick movies was custom. Everything. Yeah. I've only oh, yeah. watched the first movie. <laughs> all, they're all fucking good. Um I just don't understand how they make another one. Like, does he get another dog and they shoot that dog? Does he watch does he watch Marley and me and just get really pissed no, off? So they actually all three movies take place like over the course of like three or four days. Yeah, they're it's, one oh, right up okay. the other. Awesome. Yeah, okay. it's really good. To me, the second one, like, for gun accuracy, as in the products, the second one was the best one. The uh, But the training that Keanu Reeves goes through for all three of the movies is insane, and he gets it done at a place called Terran Tactical. And, uh, yeah, Terran, Tact uh, Terran is like a world-class competition shooter. He's, like, the best in the fucking world. And so, like, all of the tactics that Keanu Reeves and any of the other actors that have any real strong 
gun skills in the movie. Like Halle Berry's gun skills in the third one was fucking awesome. Yeah, they all went through the training. Right, and they all have to go through that training, man. And it's some vigorous shit, but everything is legit. Like, in the second one, Keanu Reeves does a lot of three-gun, where he goes between his his sidearm, which would be his pistol, a shotgun, and a rifle, most likely an AR-15 or an AK-47. And when he's going through it, man, and you're jumping between one and the other, everything is completely based on legit technique. Huh. It's awesome fucking awesome and then also the product placement in the second one is legit like everything that he's using on his firearms is legit firearms like like if i'm not mistaken in the second one he uses a lot of glock stuff and in the first one he uses a lot of sig stuff but in the second one he uses a lot of glock stuff the uh ar-15 i think that he uses in the second one is made by century arms and it's got like trench <laughs> and sights and all kinds of other shit on it a benelli, I know that. yeah this yeah the shotgun is a benelli these are all legit high dollar top of the line in fucking firearms. In in knock knock, he used a lot of cock stuff. <laughs> I fucking hated that movie. That I wish so I had to it. That was see, that was overacting bad Keanu. Yeah, that one. I, like I bought that movie and I've still got it on Blu-ray, and I wish I hadn't. It was a waste of fucking money. Uh, yeah. So whenever funny. whenever people mention Holly Berry, the first movie I think of is Swordfish. Really? I think that movie was better than people gave it credit for. It was. It's a fun movie. It's not no, accurate, Swordfish. but it's a fun movie. He had to hack while getting a blowjob and a gun to his head. Yeah, I've done that. Either you way, he's Thursday? blowing his load. Did you ever see Thursday? Yeah, you uh, made me watch it, where she she fucking ties the dude up and starts fucking him with a gun to his head, and is like, if you come, you die. Yeah, that movie's great. Yeah, we, we I remember the day we watched that. We watched that in London. Yeah, God, man, I was on a fucking jason statham kick like last week so i watched a few of his movies and i really wanted to watch london and i don't have it oh uh, yeah what? huh which one london i don't think i know what that is because it's, it's not an it, action movie it's not an action movie it's really oh, fucking good though. Hey, hey. it's basically this guy breaks uh, him and his girl break up and he goes to her like going away party or some shit and him and jason statham with a full head of hair do coke in the bathroom all night while people come in and out to like piss and do coke and they all have all these weird random conversations it's a good fucking movie you need to watch it (laughs) yeah um oh sorry guys this episode is now official random questions with us uh kenneth (laughs) uh, both of y'all you can keep one Jason Statham movie and the rest have to go. What movie do you keep? Oh, shit. Let me think. Cause Mine's like, easy. Hands down, there's only one movie that's the greatest Jason Statham movie of all time. Which is? Snatch. Snatch is good. Snatch is But really is that good. a Jason Statham movie? He's the main character. Yep, is true. he? Yeah. Yep, he's the narrator. Okay. All right. Mm. Suck it, nerd. Hang on. I'm pulling up uh, IMDb. It mm. definitely ain't going to be the Fast and the Furious movies. No. <laughs> Although I He's really do those? like those. He's in the later ones, yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Jason. I'm trying to think of like what I've watched that is... Uh... Uh, the Transporter, Crank. No, I, I know what he's in. I'm just oh. like, what is, what is the one that I watched that made me go, fuck yeah, I can watch this all over again. I'd probably have to say it would be really it would be a hell of a toss up for me between Snatch, the Transporter, and fucking um, the Mechanic. The first Mechanic oh, okay. you might actually like because the Mechanic it's, was really good. The first one is not uh, is not um, it's not typical it, Jason Statham. It's more is it drama. better? Is it better than the Machinist? I've never seen that one. It's not the same kind. It's not nowhere near the same. I don't give a shit, Kenneth. Is it better than The Machinist? Okay, so when we say Jason Statham movies, we're talking about the ones where he is the main character, yeah? Uh, No, he's in the fucking movie. I don't care. As long as he's in the movie, it's a Jason Statham movie. Well, like, if if, if you mean every movie he's ever in goes away, then, like, he has a a passing role in Collateral, and that movie's a movie. Okay, he has to be in the movie for at least, like, 30 minutes. Hummingbird was really good, too. 30 minutes of screen time since Jay can't fucking just pick a movie. (laughs) You sicken me, Jay. Pick a damn movie. I like the one over the rest of his movies. If if we're talking about like him leading the movie, then probably the first Transporter. 
like I said, it would be. A, 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 I would have to sit down in any mini money mo between snatch. The oh, you're a big fucker, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, I, w- I really would between snatch transporter and uh, and them uh, the mechanic. And don't get me wrong, lock, stock, and two smoking barrels was pretty fucking good too. Fair. Lock, stock, oh. and two smoking barrels and snatch is like Evil Dead and Evil Dead Two. Expendables, Expendables is good. Uh, the first one was good. The second one. Over everything else though but i think that's a good analogy between lock stock and fucking snatch it's like evil dead and evil dead too oh that brings up another question i like to ask people are you team texas chainsaw massacre and evil dead or team evil dead 2 and texas chainsaw massacre 2 mm. I'm tame Texas Chainsaw Massacre and Evil Dead 2. I'm splitting the difference. <laughs> no, you can't. You either get the originals or the sequels. The other I'll ones go the away. Sequels, then. Kenneth? Oh. Fuck. Playing hardball here, Kenneth. Oh, that's a hard one. That's, so that's a hard real one. hard one. If it makes your decision, he chose the second one. I'm choosing the, I'm choosing the originals. That, no, that doesn't make it any, any better. It doesn't. Okay. It made me harder. I guess is what I meant to say. It made you harder? Nice. Yes. Harder, stronger, better, faster. <laughs> I'd probably have to go with the originals. That's what I'm talking about. And the only reason is, is because, don't get me wrong, I fucking love Evil Dead 2. But to me, as funny as Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 is, it's the weaker of the two. And I think Evil Dead is the stronger. Of, Evil Dead 2 is the stronger of the two. But it's not strong enough to overpower the weakness of TCM 2. Fair. That's that's. I like that. I like what I'm hearing. I like Dennis Hopper with two <laughs> chainsaws. <laughs> Old double chainsaw dick. I, mean, I, I don't like, like I, said, I, I, I don't like Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. Not a fan. I mean, it was funny. I like it, but not enough. Like I said, not enough to overpower the original. And, and how much I love Evil Dead 2 is not strong enough to overpower the weakness of the second. Mm. Because even when even when TCM 3 comes in, damn, it 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 bounces back from the hilarity of the second one. Okay. It, goes, it tries to go back in seriousness again, which I can give it credit for. Whereas, damn, Evil Dead kept with the thing when Army of Darkness came out, and it was so fucking hilarious, too. Okay, so, another question. You get to pick two Stephen King movies, and the rest are gone. Easy. Shawshank Redemption and The Mist. Okay, okay. Kenneth? Rose red and green mile. Wow. Isn't that rose yeah, red? Wow. Uh, I'm going with uh, Silver Bullet. And unfortunately, I also have to make number two Silver Bullet because I needed extra room for Gary Busey's teeth. <laughs> uh, no, but uh, Silver Bullet. And um, I would probably end up going with The Mist. See, The Mist is my favorite. But I think Shawshank is his best. Did you know that was Frank Darabont's first movie? The Mist or Shawshank? Shawshank. (laughs) I didn't know he did it, so no, I did not know that. Yep. I don't even know who that is. He's the guy who did The Mist. (laughs) Yep. Oh, he directed The Mist also? Yeah. Yeah, he's known for... Yeah, he's known for doing... uh, for doing Stephen King shit, like what? What is he? King the hit, fucking please. New Age Mick Garris? <laughs> Mick Garris, man, that's that a dude. deep cut for you people out there. Uh, okay, um, I'm trying Mick to think Garris about shit. Is so hit or miss, man. Oh my god, it's so fucking hit or miss. <laughs> uh, but most of his stuff that misses and really misses is because he was doing Stephen King a favor and sticking real close to that book. Did he do like the the fucking TV version of The Shining? Yes. Is yeah. Okay? Exactly. Um god but damn. the guy that the guy that played um uh fucking god now I can't even think of his fucking name. 
the guy that played Jack in the TV version is the guy that narrates um, the audiobook of It. Oh, really? Yeah. That's wow, cool. I did not know that. Yeah, and he was also in Wings. I ate wings today. Mm, wings Boneless delicious. wings. So they're not really wings, but we still call them All right, come on, wings. man. I mean, if you're going to do this, get some more going. Uh, fu- oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm the only one who can who can come up with questions. Y'all can come up with questions, too. You okay. Cunt. Going back to our earlier conversation, is Woody Harrelson a movie star or an actor? He's an actor. I think so, too. I'm just, I'm just asking. I don't think we had a debate over Woody Harrelson. No, we didn't. The debate That's was over Robert. No, the debate was over Robert Downey Jr., yeah, but it was a topic as a whole we were talking oh, about. Oh. So I was asking about Woody Harrelson. Yeah, actor. You can't play this character. You can't play Mickey and then be like, I'm going to be my exact self. Someone let me be Larry Flint. <laughs> okay, I will give you credit for that, for Larry Flint. But otherwise, he seems like the same motherfucker. Like, I could totally see them... His character from White Man Can't Jump going over the top and fucking goddamn killing somebody in a convenience store. Uh, like getting uh, pissed off as fuck at Wesley Snipes and being like, alright, fuck this shit and killing somebody. Okay. Fair. But his character in, in uh, White Man Can't Jump gets in a fist fight with Michael Douglas from falling down. Who wins? Oh... Damn. Yeah, fuck with me. Hit you with the hardball. Say it one more time. Uh, Woody Harrelson's character from White Man Can't Jump gets in a fist fight with Michael Douglas's character in Falling Down. Who wins? I don't think Michael Douglas's character is very good at fist fighting at all. He just walks around with some guns and lucks into everything. I was just about to ask, what point in the movie are we talking <laughs> about? Like, are we talking about like fast food restaurant Michael Douglas, or are we talking about stuck in traffic Michael Douglas? <laughs> I don't know. I didn't think Either this way, far ahead. It's not like everything he does is with weapons. We don't know if he even has. Yeah, I probably okay. Okay, I'm with Jay on this one. I'm pretty sure that I'm. I, I would be almost positive that damn Woody Harrelson's character from White Man Camp Jump would probably beat the shit out of him in a one on one just to cuss. Okay, fair. Okay, you have to make a re uh, a remake has to be made, and they're targeting uh, the Exorcist or Jaws. Which one would you rather see a remake of? Jaws. Jaws. <laughs> wow y'all jumped on that real quick <laughs> simultaneously one of y'all fucking owes the other one a coke although funny enough they are also redoing the exorcist apparently what really i saw something uh today that said uh they're remaking john carpenter's a thing and john carpenter's involved with it yeah so they there's new there's extra story from the book that just got uncovered or some shit oh like yeah that. yeah yeah and they're going to remake the movie, but using that and something. That would be dope. I would like to see that. I don't know if I'd... Ca- Man, that's where you really get into it. Because John Carpenter's The Thing is, is, that, is, more, is more of a book adaptation than The Thing from Another World is. So Honestly. there's there's a lot of argument whether John Carpenter's The Thing is a remake or not. Because it's a better adaptation of the book. So if this comes out, is it a remake of John Carpenter's The Thing? Or is it a better adaptation of the book than the previous movie? I would really like to see more. Uh, I would, I, Even though it ended very, very well, very tastefully, I'd still like to see what happened after that. Between um, uh, John Carpenter's play, got a script written for it. Play he knows. He just won't tell anyone. Yeah, actually, that's right. You've got the thing video game, but John Carpenter also has a script written that he said no one would give him the money for. What? Yeah, no one will give him will give him the money he wants to make a sequel to I'll the thing. I'll give him the money. What does he need? A couple bucks? I got him. Yeah, Jay, <laughs> give him your fucking custom screwdrivers. I'm sure it'll get it made. That's yeah. some bullshit, man, because damn. Oh, my God. Like, the thing is a staple amongst horror fans you know it may have tanked at the time but fucking 30 years later it's just it only tanked at the time though because it had to go against a fight against et and blade runner 
But still, I mean, like I said, I mean, look at look at the following that it has now. I mean, honestly, when it really comes down to it, there's there's I don't even know one horror fan that doesn't like the movie. I don't either. And if I did, I wouldn't talk to them. I mean, so I'm pretty sure that, damn, if they were to make a legit sequel, horror fans would be all over it. Yeah. I mean, I think so. And I think it, I think it would do well as long as uh, that's not the same weekend that E.T. 2 and uh, Blade <laughs> Runner pre-running comes out. Sorry, I have no interest in watching. Hell, I barely have any interest in watching the original E.T. Uh, you know, I'm not a fan of E.T., I'm going to say it. Put it in out there. Uh, I, I think I've maybe only seen it like twice in my life. Kid. I think I've only seen it like twice in my life. But I didn't yeah. have a lot of movies to choose from. So add it, add it to the list of movies I don't like everyone loves. Put it right next to Back to the Future and Gremlins. Gremlins is so good. And I still haven't watched Blade Runner 2049. I, I own it. I liked it. <laughs> I own it and I still haven't watched it. I watched it on 4K but and it looked beautiful. I'm one of those people that finds the first one kind of tedious to watch. I love Blade Runner. I love the original Blade Runner, but I, it's not something I would sit down and be like, I guess I'm just going to watch Blade Runner. Like, I have to I be in a certain mood. I love the cast. Like, and then a lot of times when I'm like, I kind of want to watch Blade Runner. Instead, I just watch the original Ghost in the Shell anime. There you go. So that happens. But I like watching the original Blade Runner with the intended ending. Intended. Well, I have that. I You know what's funny is I haven't watched it since I bought it, but I found that super duper box set with every cut of the movie ever made in it for five bucks at a pawn shop. And I was like, well, I should probably buy this. Uh, what's got like more? Bucks, and I never watched any of them. What has more alternative versions? Dune or Blade Runner? I don't know. I could Blade never get Runner. into Dune. Blade Runner. I tried to watch Dune, and about 20 minutes in, I just kind of stopped. I watched the, uh, honestly, and people out there are probably going to want to crucify me over this. But Good. I actually, you deserve it. <laughs> I actually enjoy the made-for-TV Dune that came out, I think, on the Sci-Fi Channel. Yeah, it was. In the early millennium. I actually like that better than the original fucking movie that came out. Huh. Well, considering I didn't say that, but I haven't watched any of them and I've never read the book, so I have no opinion. Yeah, I didn't make it past 15 minutes, so I don't know. It follows with the books better, and then you got a sequel that came out to it called Children of Dune. You know what I'm saying? The sequel to the book, but... In the in that movie, it's really long. It's lengthy, so you like when you you got to commit. <laughs> it takes a while to get through, but you know from from what I what I've seen of the original Dune movie, and then what other people have said, hell, it's a chore to get through that one too. And it's only I think like two and a half hours long, versus the made for TV one. I want to say is like six. Hmm. Okay. You only get one John Carpenter movie that was made in the '90s. What do you pick? What are what? Are the, I'm terrible with dates. Is that when the thing was made? No, the thing is the is the '80s. Okay, is that when They Live was made? Y- no, They Live is '80s also. Uh, listen, I'm terrible with dates, man. I know you haven't had one in years. But oh, psh. all right, let me let me hop on IMDb and look at his, his filmography here. Mine's in so, the mouth of 90s, madness. We have body bags, memories of invisible man, village of the damned, in the mouth of madness, escape from L.A., vampires. I'm going with vampires. I'd probably say in the mouth of madness. It'd be between that and vampires. Yeah. Does it give you a little wood? A little wood. Mahogany. Little <laughs> mahogany. For all my Dragon Ball Z abridged people out there, mahogany. <laughs> Uh, which, if you've never watched Dragon Ball Z abridged and you love Dragon Ball Z, watch it because it's fucking hilarious. Absolutely. Especially if you're high on marijuana. Oh no, my marijuana plants. No, I'm not a Yoshi. <laughs> he's he, no, he's a Yoshi. Um, okay. Um, I don't know if I have any more questions. I think it's about time we wrap this up. We, yeah, we that totally, was fun though. 
went oh, off kill. Uh, how about that? How about that? I, what if I just do a post and y'all drop a shit ton of questions in there to make us answer and we'll just do a whole Q and A episode. I, yo, that's, I love that. I fucking love that. Yeah. Okay. We'll, it. we'll do that and uh, we'll see what happens. So thank you for joining us for kill the cast. Uh, we talked about, um, I was just going to say, that's honestly how you can see how much all of us really felt about Natural Born Killers, because we just ventured off into other you know, things away from the movie. I, we still I thought, discussed the movie, though. <laughs> yeah, I thought we would get into the message when I was like, oh, let's do Natural Born Killers. Um, well, and I thought we'd message. really get just... into the message, and then I was like, Jesus Christ, they, they fucking shoved the message so far down your throat blatantly. That there's nothing, there's no subtleness to talk to. Like, unless we're going to get into, like, um, the color green is used only in certain areas. And uh, you can also notice that uh, Mickey, he only, whenever he's in a really tense situation, that's when he starts having his flashbacks, specifically towards his dad. Uh, And when his dad's headless corpse gets out of the chair and comes towards him that shows that he's still really scared of that his father may still get him and he's not completely free from his father no one gives a shit anymore oh, see the thing about it is, is is like that would be a discussion if it like if it wasn't like what you just said where it's fucking blatantly obvious that that's what it's about yeah so if our discussion on natural born killers was not that good i take the blame for it because i picked it that is on me homies the movie, um, I I the movie was great when I was a teenager. The movie was great when I was a teenager, but as an almost forty-year-old man, it's really not. It, it really doesn't hold up. I guess it's because I'm missing all that teen angst. Yeah, unlike the new Batman, who his dad uh, took him into the city to see a black parade. Have you seen the? I'm assuming you watched the trailer. Nope. It's like I'm gonna get tricked again by DC having a good trailer. Get the fuck out of here. Fuck I don't trust no. those cunts. Listen, the whole cast and crew, I'm I'm fucking stoked. No, I have no problem with him playing Batman because people get all upset about playing Batman and I'm like, you realize Batman is not a hard character to play, right? No, he's not. It's easy as fuck. And that dude is a fucking great actor. Anyone who can play a retarded dude as well as he can can probably handle any fucking role. And if you think Wait, I'm making a joke, I'm not. What? Hugh Jackman. No, I said, Robert what? Patterson. I said, I said, what? He was acting? Yes, he was acting. He's a fantastic... I'm like, I'm not... I know a lot of people would think I'm making a joke. I'm not. He he did fucking fantastic in that movie. What movie was that? Um, Fuck, what's that movie called? Which one? The one where he played the retarded boy. Also, if anyone gets upset about me saying retarded, retarded, that is a medical fucking term. So suck a dick. Suck it, douchebag. Yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah. If anybody yeah. out there that listens to this podcast can tell me where that came from, we'll do a. I, I will. I will make everybody do a specifically an episode just picked for the movie that you pick. Anybody can tell me where that came from. Suck it, douchebag. Zach Morris, I don't know. Uh, so if any listener out there can tell me where that came from, me, Jerry, and Jay, based on my forcing, will do any movie that you choose. Any movie that you choose. Any movie. That means it doesn't have to be horror. We're going to do it. That's right. Any movie. Uh, I swear to God, someone's going to be like, huh, what movie did Jerry said he a- hate that's an 80s comedy? Fuck him. <laughs> um, okay, so... Yeah. One more time, if you can tell me where the phrase "suck it, douchebag" comes from, and the movie that I'm specifically talking about, there you go. You Wait, won. movie? I thought it was a podcast. No, it's from a movie. Oh, I thought it was from a podcast. Okay, from a movie. You people out there, figure it out. Uh, we're kill the cast. We've been kill the cast. We love you. We're gonna do a Q and A episode. So start thinking of uh, beautiful, tasty questions. And uh, we'll just get a shit ton of questions, and then we will um, just fucking do that. And if there's not enough questions, I'll make up questions. Fuck yeah. I'll bring some questions, too. Everyone will bring questions. We'll, we'll do that if if there's not enough questions, or even if there is enough questions, 
We'll we'll bring one to five questions each, depending on how many questions you people ask. What do you mean, you people? You people in the Facebook group, calm down. <laughs> um, and with that, we're gonna get out of here. Um, I've got to work a double tomorrow, so I, I kind of want to get out of here. Uh, I have to deal with my family tomorrow. That's never fun. Oh, you know what Mickey and Mallory say about family? <laughs> Fuck. You know em. what OJ says about family? If you love something, kill it. All right, and that's us getting out of here as fast <laughs> as we can in our white Bronco. We'll see you next time. Thank you for stopping by. Thanks for hanging out with us this evening as we have these fine chats. Uh, I hope you had a good dinner tonight because I feel like that's maybe something that you're actually listening to during the day and you haven't had your dinner yet and you're like, oh, fuck, now I'm thinking about dinner. I'm going to have a good-ass dinner. Thanks, Jerry. That's what Kill the Cast does for you. We care. Uh, any parting words, ever, anyone? The glove no. doesn't fit. <laughs> then you must watch Snatch. <laughs> Is that right, Rambo? Different movie, saying it anyway. Goodbye, everyone. If you enjoyed this show, then make sure you check out the other great shows on the Legion Podcast Network, like Cinema Psyops, Cinema Beef, Devour the Podcast, Duncan and Bo Come Correct, Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast, Friday the 13th, Get Slayed, The Hell Mean Power Hour, Hello, This is the Doom Show, Hero Hero Go Show, Kill the Cast, Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space, Jerry Hates Action, Legion After Dark, Mental Health, Obsessive Cinema, Discourse, Pick 6 Movies, The Podcast by the Cemetery, The Podcast on Haunted Hill, The Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shadecast, Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Witch vs. the Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. Horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found.